This is what I started with. It's an old white oak barrel that had been used for aging red wine. Before I got too far into it, I decided to make a little cradle to be able to hold the barrel while I was working on it. This is kind of important because the barrel being round makes it a little hard to work on. That being said, I didn't use this as much as I thought I would, and the design left a little to be desired. I added some little strips to help with the rocking, and it worked to some extent. Real quick, let's talk about the anatomy of a wine barrel with a really bad animation. The barrel is an oblong cylinder with a top and a bottom, and the sides are made of pieces called staves. There's no glue, nails, or screws, or any other kind of fastener that holds a wine barrel together. Without the metal hoops that wrap around the staves, the entire barrel would fall apart. So before I could cut into anything, I had to make sure that the metal hoops wouldn't come off the barrel unless it was intentional. To hold the metal rings in place tightly and keep the barrel at one piece, I added screws at strategic places. Whenever I'm drilling into metal, I always like to use a center punch to keep the bit from wandering. Working my way around the barrel, I drilled holes and added screws. The areas where I'm adding screws every two inches are eventually going to be the doors. I put the extra screws on for the doors because the doors will not have the benefit of the top and bottom rings once they're cut off and opening. I did end up gluing these staves together as well, so adding all these screws was probably overkill. With that done, I cut the two center bands that are on the split lines that will be the edges of the doors. With that done, I still needed a way to cut the vertically running staves perpendicularly along the horizontal plane. To do that as neatly as possible, I made a temporary modification to a small cordless circular saw that I have. After removing the base plate, I drilled four holes into it. I then made a fixture for the saw out of some leftover plywood and scraps that I had lying around. The reason I'm doing this is because I want my cut to be 90 degrees to the center axis of the barrel. I've seen a lot of other videos on how to make barrel cabinets where people use oscillating saws or reciprocating saws to make the cuts. This works okay, but the result can be a cut that's not perpendicular to the center axis of the barrel, but instead perpendicular to the outer curve of the skin of the barrel. I designed this jig so that when the barrel and the jig itself are both sitting on the same surface, the blade will cut at the barrel at the exact spot where I want the cut to be. Aside from making sure that the blade is set at the right height, which incidentally it ended up not being, I had to make sure that the blade was running perfectly parallel to the surface of the table to prevent binding during the cut. Some of my screws were a little long, so I ground them smooth. Once the base plate was mounted, I reinstalled the saw. The last step was plunging it through. I wasn't really sure how this was going to go, so to be safe, I strapped the barrel to the table so it would move around. As I mentioned earlier, I inadvertently mounted the saw about an inch and a half higher than I wanted the cut to be. I compensated for this by putting the barrel on two pieces of three quarter inch plywood. This actually cut incredibly well. Had I set the saw at the right height to begin with and not had to mess around with the plywood, I could have done this cut in one shot. Even so, I ended up with a nice clean cut that was perfectly parallel to the top and bottom of the barrel. I did have to take care though that I didn't cut past the line where my stave split would be. I finished the cuts in the corners with a Japanese handsaw. Additionally, it turned out that a few of the staves were thicker than I had anticipated, so I used the saw to get all the way through those. There was at most about a sixteenth to a thirty-second of an inch left on any of the staves that weren't cut all the way through. Had the base plate of my jig been a little bit thinner, or the saw blade on my saw a little bit bigger, this wouldn't have been a problem at all. After I cut what would be the bottom of the door, I flipped the barrel over and made the cut for the top. Once both cuts were complete, the door came off as easy as can be. The last thing I did was a quick clean up with the sander. 
I still needed to cut the piece that I'd removed in half, and I wanted the split line to be right down the center of the bum hole. I made this a lot harder than I needed to by removing these rivets. If I could do this again, I would have just left them there. With the center stave removed, I cut it right down the middle to make the bung hole into what would eventually be the handhold to open up the doors to this cabinet. I cleaned up the bandsaw cut with two light passes on the joiner. I plug welded up the holes from the rivets that I should not have removed. I ground those welds smooth and then I completed the separation of the two door halves. The back side of the rivet still remained, so I bored out the holes in the stave to make a little more room for it. With that done, I glued the center pieces back onto the rest of the door. I also added screws so the whole spacing would look correct. I want to take a moment to talk about hinge geometry with another really bad animation. For the doors to open properly, the hinges themselves need to be running perfectly parallel to the vertical axis of the barrel. To make this door function properly, I needed to make the hinges. I started with some basic utility hinges. Because I was going to weld them, I needed to dissolve the zinc plating off. To do that, I just used vinegar overnight. I needed to make these hinges longer, so I used some steel plate stock that was the same width as the hinges themselves. After I made sure everything was square, I tack and plug welded these extensions onto my hinges. I'm not the greatest welder, so there was a decent amount of grinding also. I had to remove a little bit more from the center bands to make room for the hinge mortises. I mounted my 24 inch square like this so I could get the hinges aligned properly. By doing it this way, I was able to keep my hinge mortise cutout marks perpendicular to the center line of the barrel axis. I marked the mortises on the doors pretty much the same way, except I used the table as the reference. While being very mindful of that metal band, I cut out the hinge mortises. I triple checked my router depth to make sure I wouldn't accidentally nick that metal band. Incidentally, the depth that I cut these hinge mortises at is slightly less than half the overall thickness of one of my closed hinges. I did it this way to leave a tiny gap on the hinge side of the doors to account for the material I had to remove from that center stave to cut it in half down the middle. To mount the hinges properly, I started by referencing everything off the surface of my table. By ensuring that the hinges were opening exactly 90 degrees to the table, I would ensure that they're also 90 degrees to the center axis of the barrel. After aligning the hinge, I marked where the screw holes would be. I drilled and countersunk to the barrel side of the hinge. While still using my alignment jig, I installed the hinges on the barrel side. With the hinges closed, I temporarily held the door in place to get an idea of where the screw holes on the door side would need to be. Next, I marked and drilled the door side holes on the hinge. To make sure I got my door alignment just right, I temporarily glued the door onto the hinge with some two-part epoxy. 
With the gap and surface contours all looking good, I let the epoxy cure. After about an hour, I opened up the door and installed the door side screws. I did do these one at a time, but when I was finished, the doors fit perfectly. With all the screw holes properly aligned, I removed the hinges and trimmed them to fit. Now it was time to trim out the inside of the barrel so I could fit in the cabinet module that I would eventually build. I started by cutting up some strips of scrap plywood with a slight bevel on the edge. I made this little alignment jig so I could install these pieces around the inside of the barrel. These will eventually support a false bottom so I wanted them all at the exact same height. The bevel is to compensate for the interior angle of the stave. With those in, I measured the interior diameter of the barrel, which is roughly 23 inches. I marked out a 23 inch diameter circle on some scrap plywood. I didn't do this on a single solid piece of plywood for a few reasons. First and foremost, I was using up scraps and these were the pieces I had. More importantly though, I figured there was going to be a lot of fine tuning and it would be way easier to fine tune smaller pieces individually than try to make one disc fit. With the router table, I put a 15 degree bevel on the outside and round part of these circle sections. Like the support blocks, this angle is to compensate for the internal curvature of the barrel staves. More fine tuning was required than what this shot would indicate, but with a little bit of effort, I got all the pieces fitting nicely. This little cutout is to let in a power wire for the lighting that will go in the cabinet. Because the round shape would make clamping very difficult, and because this will never be seen, I joined the sections of the circle together with pocket screws. Before permanently sealing up this area, I drilled out a hole for the power line. I also made this little bracket, which I did a very bad job of videoing to make sure that the power cord wouldn't push all the way into the barrel. The power line will get permanently installed later. And when it is installed, that little cutout I put in the disc will make getting the cord running up to the top of the barrel much easier. I installed the disc with glue and nails in the spots where all the nail holes wouldn't be visible. Next, I needed to make some sort of shroud for the as yet to be built cabinet module. I used a pre cut spacer block to make sure these cleats I'm installing were perfectly parallel. I used the cutout in the barrel to make a CAD template. I used the CAD template to be able to mark out the curve on some thin pieces of oak for the trim pieces. These trim pieces will fill the gap between the cabinet module and the outside of the barrel. I wedged the shroud in place temporarily so I could glue on the trim pieces. After the glue had dried, I used a router with a flush trim bit to cut off the excess. I also did finish sanding on the trim pieces before permanent install. I still needed to trim out the recess left at the top. My solution could have been planned a lot better. I shaped and attached a small support block to the outside of the barrel. Next I fashioned a blanking panel. This panel will eventually have a strip of LED lights on it, as well as the on-off switch. 
It's made to fit in slightly recessed so that the lights are not immediately evident when you look inside the cabinet. The top of the barrel is going to form a tabletop that will also have a shadow box display area under it. Luckily the inner diameter of the top barrel ring was exactly 22 inches, which happened to be the diameter of the tempered glass disc that I had. Unfortunately, the barrel was not quite perfectly round. I started by removing the metal ring. As it turned out, each ring had two little pins that would keep them from sliding off. I was able to pull these out pretty easily. While mulling over how I was going to make the piece of glass fit on top, I did a little sanding. After determining a solution, I drilled screw holes around the entire diameter of the metal ring. I made a little jig to be able to evenly install the ring a quarter inch proud of the wood part of the barrel. This left a small inflexible flange that would hold the glass. I used the angle grinder to cut a small groove in a piece of all thread that I had. I was able to use this tool to bend a small flange in the ring, making a more round shape that the glass would fit into. It took a little while, but it worked great. The fit didn't end up 100% perfect. There were a few small gaps, but in the end, it held the glass perfectly in place and kept the top flush. That's all I really wanted. I did this a little backwards. I did the entire finishing of the outside part of the barrel before I made the insert for the inside. One by one, I removed each ring so I could sand underneath it. It wasn't necessarily important that the area underneath the ring be sanded, but I wanted the sanding to be as even as possible. I finished all the wood surfaces with Osmo PolyX oil. I edge primed and edge painted all the rings while they were off the barrel. Final painting was done with the rings installed and lots of masking. For the color I used an oil rubbed bronze paint from Krylon. I also took a moment and added some leveling feet to the bottom. This barrel is pretty heavy and it might end up on hardwood floors someday and I wouldn't want to scratch the floor with that metal ring on the bottom. Off camera, I cut all the pieces from my cabinet insert. I used pocket holes to hold it together because none of the screws would be visible. I also cut solid wood to edge band the plywood. These pieces were then glued onto the forward facing edges of the plywood. I also glued up some solid wood panels for the interior dividers. Part of the interior cabinet is a wine rack, so now is the time to add the runners for those wine bottles. I use spacers to keep everything properly spaced and parallel. I made my drawer supports and runners out of some small aluminum angle stock. I drilled and countersunk tiny screw holes in these. Roughed up the backs a little and then installed them using screws and Gorilla Glue. I should also add that before I even added the wine bottle supports, I fully finished sanded the inside parts of these panels. Again, I used spacer blocks to make sure everything was even and parallel. With the side panels done, I assembled the cabinet.
If I had planned this a little bit better, I would have cut rabbits to hold in the interior dividers. This groove is for the wire that will be part of the LED lighting system. I made the drawers out of some 3 8 inch thick solid white oak. I used a dado stack to cut rabbits on the front and back pieces of the drawers. I had already swapped the dado stack out before I realized I forgot to cut rabbits for the drawer bottoms, so I did them like this. I finished sanded the inside surfaces before I assembled the drawer boxes. Then I glued all the pieces together. I used some quarter inch plywood for the drawer bottoms. These were just glued in. I pre-drilled the holes for the poles before I did the finish sanding on the outside of the drawer boxes. Two bars were added to the back side of the cabinet module to serve as drawer stops. And with that done, the drawers were ready for finishing. I started the lighting by permanently gluing in the power receptacle. I'm using 12 volt LED strip lights left over from the illuminated custom closet build. Video link in the upper right corner. With that in, I extended the wires. I didn't video this because there just wasn't enough room inside the barrel for the camera and me to work. The first lights that I installed were on the cabinet module. After stripping the wires, I soldered the ends. The bare wires were then installed into the strip light connector. A dab of hot glue is used to make sure everything stays in place. I cut the 8mm strip light to the desired length. I then installed it onto the connector, making sure that it didn't cross my positives and negatives. I then permanently installed the strip onto the cabinet with a little dab of glue under the connector and a little tiny screwed on clip. I glued the rest of the wire lead into the channel I had cut earlier that was on the outside of the cabinet module. I made a simple backing panel for the cubby in the center part of the cabinet module. I glued some fake leather that I had to a quarter inch plywood panel. I glued a little pre-made light bar down the middle of the back of the panel. This will illuminate the interior back cavity of the wine barrel. I purposefully didn't put any kind of backing panel on the area where the wine bottles will go, so this light will illuminate the back of the barrel and the wine bottles. This panel was then screwed on. I permanently installed the cabinet module by sliding it right into the shroud. Four screws hold it in place. The upper blanking panel with lights pre-installed went on next. I used some safety wire to fish out all the individual wire leads. At some point during the build, I realized I was gonna need some sort of access port to get to the wires, so I added that large hole that I'm pulling all the wires through. I wired in the switch, then connected all the positives and negatives together in groups. Then I tested it. With everything working, I soldered the ends together and added some heat shrink to insulate the bare wires. 
I 3D printed a little blanking plate to cover up the wire access hole. For finishing touches, I added the drawer pulls and lined the drawer bottoms with more of the fake leather. Just when I thought I was done, I realized I still needed some door stops. I whipped up two of these little guys and added magnets. I epoxied them in place and then added a screw after the epoxy had hardened. For the final steps, I installed the magnetic plates on the doors. With the glass in place, the wine barrel liquor cabinet was done. Of course, looking at these pictures, you might be wondering, why so many drawers in a wine rack? This was actually made to be an Air Force retirement shadow box, and the drawers are for storing memorabilia. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching.